The world is changing. 51 years ago, the War of the Wilds came to a stalemate. The people of the Greynor Peninsula set all plant life ablaze to stop the stranglehold and built a mighty wall to keep the wilds at bay. All the while, they sat atop their monument, never truly knowing why this all began. A likeness of peace blanketed the blasted lands. One year ago, it all changed. An ancient god, once bound by old magic, found himself free and took his vengeance as his shackles were shattered. The mountainous city of Bulwark paid a grave price, but in the wake of this destruction comes the first glimpses of the possibility for true and honest peace. Our heroes venture from their familiar homeland into the fullness of what their world was before the war, a world they've touched but never truly seen. They find themselves caught between a land that has tried to end their lives hundreds of times over and a country they helped decimate. Under the canopy, they seek glory, truth, and salvation. The world is changing, and their hands will guide it. Hello, and welcome back to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I continue to be your GM. Today, the Decimators move up their plants and learn a troublesome truth. Thank you to our backers, Kyle, Jeremy, and Nate, for their support. With that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. So you know what I did today, boys? What was, what was that? that? Something not IT related. <gasps> Weird. I know, right? Why? Because about a month ago, I was able to convince my drama director that instead of attempting to do concert staged reading of something or stage reading of a script or figuring out something like that and the streaming and the whole nine yards instead we should just do war of the worlds and do an actual recorded radio drama how yeah. fun so i spent today attempting to turn my uh art gallery into a recording studio how'd that go i'm not sure yet <laughs> legit Legit. I started in the auditorium. That was a bad idea. Oh, yeah. It is big and echoey. I then moved uh, to the green room, which was also a bad idea because everything is hardwood. Mm. And there's a giant mirror and nothing soft anywhere. I then moved to the kitchen in the hopes that maybe the low-hanging ceiling would be good, um, but the fridge is running all the time. Yeah. So that's no good. So then I moved to the tech booth. It's like, all right, there's no real airflow in here. And it's going to be hot, but at least there's like carpeted floors and the walls are soft and it'll be better and everything. Nope. There's a circuit breaker box in there and that makes noise. Uh. So then I emptied out our uh, artist gallery, uh, which has not been empty in about nine months. Mm hmm. It's the same art that has still been there since the pandemic started. So that was fun to move. But that has carpet. It has some soft walls. I dug out our drum shield, and I'm digging out our portable hey. curtains. Well, I, I, yeah, okay. I, I, I found great success with packing blankets. So Yeah, yeah, that's a, I'm going to pack everything as much as I can. Thankfully, I can have a couple extra students that are going to stand around and hold up packing blankets, much like they are bounce boards. <laughs> good. It's going to be very, very, very strange, and I hope we can put out a decent product at the end of all of this. But it's been interesting. I bet. Yeah. <clears throat> but we actually have a tech design class that's usually supposed to build the fall play. They're supposed to build the set and the props and everything. And instead, they're learning sound design. Honestly, an underrated skill. Very. Fact. Yeah. So they get to do sound effects and learn how everything kind of works and doing you notes. Do a and whole f uh, do a Foley section. Yeah, pretty much. They get to make their own effects. They get to try to record things. They get to learn about audio quality. Hopefully, you know, it's good enough that uh, we don't feel like we wasted our time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So hello to all of the new students who learned that I podcast when I uh, started speaking in class yesterday. <laughs> Oops. 
Eh, it's going to happen. Okay. Whoops. I, I was going to say, like, at, yeah. at this point, it's just, it's an inevitability. It's an inevitability. Right. It's just, they, the kids haven't been around each other to talk about things. Point. Mm. So there's the whole new freshman class didn't know. Right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. And there was no musical, really, which is where people talk and people f- find things out. Right. If you don't know, now you know. I want to play D and D. You want to play D and D? I want to play. Ah, oh, dicks. All right. I I guess. All right. Well, let's do it. All right. Are we in the episode? I'm ready. Da-da-da-da. We will be. Right. Uh. Now. God. Hey Griff. Hey Griff. Get back. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was that was Ryan. I can't burp. You know this. Yeah, yeah, I, forget, I forget that you're you're like a chicken. <laughs> I'm like oh, podcast boy. over. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was you. Wow. Huh. I had that. Uh. My pop filter was partially obscuring your face. I'm sorry. I saw your head move. I thought it was you. I'm sorry. My eyes just are naturally drawn to you, Griff. What can I say? Promoting Chase Greenlee to best friend. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Erasing one speech from the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You already did me a dirty as you could. <laughs> we are not bringing that onto the show. Uh, he deserves another get bent. Let's keep. Let's move on. <laughs> I earned my first one. As the fear sits down and the room kind of refills with silence, at that point there is a a very small knock at the door. Penitus comes in. I give Saphir's thigh a congratulatory squeeze. <laughs> I, I, I give you one back. A lot of thigh squeezing. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Penitus. I am the Major Domo. Those of you who are newly joining us, I will be showing you to your rooms momentarily. There is a, a lunch waiting for those who require it there. Uh, those who do not require it, you are welcome to enjoy the hospitality that we can offer you. If there's anything that I can be doing for you, please let me know. I am here to help. With that, Penitus leaves the door open and gestures for uh, the new arrivals to follow them. There is a, a moment where they all file out, many of the bulwark contingent, looking at each of you in turn, uh, some of them nodding. Some of them just leaving you alone. The Amber Forged stand up and, without deterrence, just follow Penitus immediately. It takes a couple of seconds for everybody to file out, but once everyone is gone, you can see the bishops visibly not relax, not deflate, but like settle back in their chairs a just bit. Kind of watch, watch, watch the posture kind of moved backwards just a little. Yep. Are we expected to go with this uh, group right now? Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like yeah. Like I haven't gotten yeah. Like I I haven't gotten up from my seat yet. Yeah. Mordecai's default setting right now is read the room. (laughs) Zephyr, make me. What is your passive perception? My passive perception is only fourteen. Fourteen is still going to be enough because you have the feed going. Yeah, that good old feed of mine. The bishops were null. The entire time that people were in there. Now that a few people are leaving, and they don't know that you know what you know, you can see the tiniest crack in their mental armor, and you can see a single thought cross through all of their minds. What do they want? What do they know? (sighs) You're telling me. (laughs) Um, well, uh, archbishops, um, I sure, I'm uh, quite sure that you would probably uh, appreciate, um, time to confer amongst yourselves, um. Please. So we will, uh, leave you, um. Certainly. If there's anything else you need, um, we'll be, uh, of course be here for you as well as we can be. We are going to be entering into individual negotiations with each of the contingents, very shortly, um, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get out while we can. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. So, uh, we're leaving in the morning. Can we? I wish you safe travels. Well, can we keep the chiropractor? We're keeping the chiropractors, right, guys? Oh, 
Yeah, go ahead. Great. All right, great. And we'll talk to Penitus about supplies, if that's okay. Certainly. I'm sure they'd be glad to help. Wonderful. Out of character real quick. Amare is coming with us, right? Because mm-hmm. it's his fucking temple. I thought yes, so. Yeah. I just blanked for a sec. We do need yeah. to get Amarea to the giant circle of power so that he can glow very brightly and ascend to the heavens. Check. Cool. He does need it. Yeah, probably something like that. He needs his Final yeah. Fantasy moment. Yes. Okay. Um. Yep. And uh, you two here in your mind. I need a drink. Again? Mordecai yes. Will... Again what? Mordecai will... will... St- Mordecai will stand up. Thank you, Archbishops, again for your uh, hospitality and time. We will leave you to your um, deference. Absolutely. If uh, I don't see you, I think I'll speak for the rest of my colleagues here when I wish you safe travels and good luck. And Thank you. Amareya Dejani, hope you don't forget us when you get to where you're going. <laughs> Amareya Dejani stands up and nods. I don't think it would be possible. You all have a fantastic day and i look forward to greeting your lords when i get where i need to be what is everybody's passive perception 14 uh currently uh, 21 uh, 15 wait what really if you have advantage on something it technically ups your passive by five by a static five so i've got Does it yeah i don't know that that's cool yeah that's it's, cool. it's I, it never comes up but like because I've got eagles wi- or uh, owl's wisdom up, my pass is normally sixteen, but with advantage on all wisdom stuff. Right now, it's a twenty-one. That makes sense. Everybody seems relatively nodding and smiling. Turbedo seems off kilter. Something about what Amareya Dejani just said put him at ill ease. Zephyr, you see across the feed. Oh no! I forgot. Forgot what? I will look to Zephyr, knowing he has the feed up, and kind of tilt my head at him. Like, do we do we press? To come come with me. Okay, y'all. I wish you could see the the head oh, that God. Zach Rob just. God, I had it a looks brain like he's trying to itch his shoulder with oh, his head. I, yeah. I just had such like my brain <sighs> shut down. Why don't come out? We'll go. We'll just leave oh, for a moment. Sure thing. Okay. <laughs> Lead the way. Cool. I'll leave What's the room. What's wrong with you? Are you okay? Are you having a stroke? Close the door. Okay. So apparently Torpedo forgot something. Said, oh no, I forgot. I don't know what that means. Forgot what? Forgot. I don't know. Uh, which which one's tr- Torpedo's the... To Lord of the Ericocra. The Ericocra. The, we should yeah. walk away so we're not talking right outside the door. Well, what do you mean? What, what? He forgot, like, in regards to what? When you were like, I'll say hello to your gods in a couple, in like a day or two. And they all were, were sort of like, mm hmm. And Torpedo was like, oh no, I forgot. That doesn't make. I mean, they should be, like, if they are gods, they should be in the celestial plane. That makes sense, right? Like, I'm, Unless they're not anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer to this. All I know is that before we leave, this is probably the only time we're going to have a chance to talk to the archbishops alone. So if we're going to press this, we do it now. Okay, okay, how do we want the, pl- I don't know, I don't know if this is, I don't know if it's worth it. I'm just saying, like, if we're going to. If we're trying to chase this, I think this is our one chance. Okay, what do we... Like, hey, by the way, I, I overheard from your brain. Um, I just... That's a little... Um, if we go in and... Fr- I I, we, I can we, attempt. Do tr- uh, Trust me enough to attempt. Trust you with my life. Absolutely. I don't really... I don't yeah. totally know what's happening here, but... I think if it concerns the gods, that's kind of our whole steez. And that's what I'm saying. If it's higher powers, we need to stick our nose in it. And if it concerns Amareya, then maybe do we want to move up our leaving plans? I mean, maybe do we want to press and go? 
I can attempt to, to press and go. There might be a little easy, casual, more casual if I step in and go, "Hey, things felt a little stinky when I left. I just wanted to make sure that you're all right, and this is this is good." That might be better than all five of us like barging back in. All right, let's do this. Here's the plan. Okay. Zephyr, you go and learn all of the secrets. I will do my best. Bail it. Go get yeah. go get the Kyrop Striders and see if you can get all the supplies. All right. Zephyr, you go find... I thought I was going to go get the secrets. Or, sorry. Mordecai, you go find <laughs> Shadowstar. I'll take Amarea. We'll go grab Kyron. We'll meet down by the Sables in an hour. I will message Pinot. He was the one that was supposed to go ahead and get it, like everything for us anyways. Great. Leave in an hour? Leave in an Sounds hour. Sounds good. Okay, Let's I'm go. going... Yes. Yeah, um, so I will... Um, you know, walk back down the hall a ways and wait, 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 wait. Hands in. One, two, three. Decimators. Decimators. I'm going to drop concentration on enhance ability for myself. Sure. And I'm going to recast it on Zephyr. Nice. Okay. Okay. For, I mean, you can read people's minds. You don't need insight. I mean, it um, might help a little more, though. I mean, unless there's a charisma one. There is a charisma one. I will recast it for Eagle's Splendor for advantage on charisma. Oh, fantastic. Then, yes, I will walk back down. I will knock on the door a couple of times, and I'll give the, them an appropriate amount of time. Messis answers the door. Hi. Mr. Johnson. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure, 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 thank you. Thank you. Um, Yes, can I uh, come come back in just for a moment? Of course. What can we do for you? Fantastic. I will take a step in. I go, things felt a little um, odd when we left. Amorea said, you know, whatever about saying hello to your lords. And things felt a little, um, you know what I mean? Hinky. Uh, it felt, felt a little hinky. Thank you. Um <laughs> And I just wanted to make sure that you are all all right. If there's anything that, like, we can do, if there's anything we should be aware of, because I believe this was sort of your idea, but then it felt like you weren't really on board anymore. So, I'd... Persuasion. Okay. I need a persuasion check. I can you do it. I am warning you now, it's high. You have a you D12. Have and you have the God Inspiration. I do. Advantage in a D twelve. All right, so roll a thirty, uh, baby. The, the best I have is a nineteen. I'm gonna, I'm going to roll my D twelve. Okay. Which was an eight, so it's a twenty seven. And if we want to go higher, I do have my ring of the liar for the day as well. I will say, if you can push it higher, that could be advantageous to you. That is not the highest I have in mind. All Wouldn't right. Ring of the Liar just give you advantage? It gives me advantage. Which you had already. Oh, beans. Yeah. Can't. I'll let you double advantage All it. Right. That's fine. Double advantage. One more roll. Use the ring. Use the ring. Use the ring. I, use it. I use... Well, I, 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 I don't know if my inspiration carries over to this. Does You're, it carry over to this? The plus eight. What do you mean? You just add the plus like eight. Like what? To what? What? Your my, my plus eight. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, it's not higher. I would have had to roll a nat twenty for it to be higher because I rolled a nineteen on the die. So fair enough. Wait, what's no, your, sorry. Wait, what, it was. What, it was. Wait, wait, a, what's your mod? Oh wait, no, mod? it wasn't. What's your persuasion skill? No, wait. Oh wait, wait one second. Because wait, no, because I just I rolled an eighteen on the die there plus my six, which is a twenty four. Plus eight, so 32. Plus 32. 32. The room goes cold. As every single one of the bishops, including the speaker, shifts in their chairs and immediately looks out the window. Grex, who has been clearly drinking this entire time, leans forward. Look, fucking Shenastilia, things are bad here, man. Yes, I understand that, but if I recall, this is sort of a thing that you kind of asked us to do. So if there's no, something we need to know, I think we have a right to know it. Messa speaks up. Please not no. And he sways. The man's right. We should have we should have told them at least. Because they're going to find out some way. 
sooner or later, whether it's by weird god shit. They're gone. What do you... Like, the lords of the forest are gone. What do you mean, gone, exactly? Like, I completely mean, gone? I mean, when your guy got out from under that fucking mountain, their job was done. And they abandoned us. They shared a divine spark, and they fucking left it. We can use it. But without someone able to control it, without someone to direct it, it's weak. That's why we've been weaker. That's why this fucking, fucking magic, this fucking wizard is able to start taking control of the city from us. Because we are half of what we're used to be. That's why all the clerics are weaker than they used to be. Because they're fucking gone. He throws a wine glass against the far wall. Understood. Okay. Well... I can't believe you, Grex. You fucking buffoon. He deserved <laughs> to know. And they're not gonna be there when he gets there. That was their goal. That was the entire fucking thing. They somehow got control of a divine spark because they knew Amareya Dejani was under some sort of duress. They didn't know what, and they spent the better part of 500 years figuring out what it was. And then they spent 50 years waging all-out war trying to get him out. They couldn't tell us. It's the thing about the divine sphere, celestial world. You can't have that direct communication. Okay, well, so your gods did everything in their power to make sure that he was free. He is yep. now. Yep. They did it for a reason. Yep. We're going because to... it was wrong. Because it was fucked. Yes. And then they left. Turbedo, finally, after being silent this whole time, joins in. And they abandoned us. Just like the gods of old did. Well, they left you in some good hands, frankly. <sighs> we will do what we need to be done, and you will have the person you need to control this spark, yes? No, we have our own spark here. The spark of the lords is still functional. But somebody... It is not as powerful as it would be if it were being properly utilized. Okay, so give it to a god. A god of the forge who can make it into whatever you need it to be, right? No, it doesn't. These things are aligned in a way. They are difficult and finicky. The sparks were born with the gods. We know that much. If I'm a Rhea Dijon... Fuck, he might. <laughs> and at this point, Grex has his head in his hands. Uh... He's clearly been on the verge of breaking since the start of the meeting. Look, we're going to go get this done. You will have a god on your side again. Just hold on a little longer, okay? We'll see. Continue what you've been doing. Uh, I, I, I don't need to tell you. You told me, which was great, and I really appreciate it. Don't tell anyone else. No shit. I, I said <laughs> it's it, it, obvious point, yes. Turbedo is now... You've never seen this uh, this man drink anything other than water, and now he is, like, reaching for the... Really, just the decorative whiskey bottle. Did, Nobody's ever had anything from that in years and he's going for that yeah just 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 finish just finish it my dude um, a gas is just sitting there head in both of their hands like blocking everything else out messis has both of her hands up against the window and is looking out in the speak to me huntington pose yes <laughs> what a niche call though i'm i'm making it we do appreciate your discretion in this endeavor. This has been a difficult thing for us to deal with. Others have noticed we have been trying to defer what it might be. It takes somebody of incredible power and strength to wield the divine sparks. We have been on the lookout, and none powerful or worthy enough have shown up. Okay, well... 
you've got a, a god about to ascend and you've got his greatest servant here in this world and able to use whatever i'm only i'm pu- putting in a reference for a friend anyway we're leaving within the hour and we will get this done okay right right the ship keep things going until we return thank you uh good luck and um yeah you know just keep peace and all that and I, I'm going. I'm going to just leave because I've got. Some, I've, I have a very not a clear deadline, but I definitely have a deadline now. Um, what a clutch roll! Holy shit! This is why you send. Oh, that's why you send the face. And now you understand why I was looking for a thirty. Yes, yeah, that's uh, a thirty right there. Yeah, I, 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 I think I did a very good job of playing it off like I didn't already fucking know. So, <laughs> or at least in some degree, didn't already. Yeah, know. you had a you had I an mean, inkling. I had an inkling. Yeah, I figured they were like weakened. Yeah, but... or and dwindling. I didn't know they were all the way gone. That's Buck Wild. Damn. Jackson, what are you doing? Not that. No. <laughs> Oh, shit. What did I say I was doing? Getting Chiron. Yes. Uh, I'm going to get Chiron. I'm taking Amare with me. Sure. In case Amare... You... In, ca- uh, in case Chiron needs any last minute convincing. Uh, I find Pinot on the way down and uh, see uh, uh, and get the money for that Coppersot passed off mm-hmm. so that I have that so I can pay Chiron because I did call that shot and I'm glad I didn't fuck me over. So, I'm, I, yeah, I just head on out to grab Kyron. Kyron, as promised, is ready to go. His go bag is prepped. Uh, he's got on his adventure in duds. Mm-hmm. He's got a seat at the locked cask and looks up at you when you come on in. I open the door. Hey, Kyron. Yeah. Shit happened. I... And I pull out the very large bag and I just let it fall on the counter in front of him. All right. You can count it, you can carry it, or you can leave it here. We gotta go. He looks at Amareya Dejani. That it? He nods. That is it. Are you ready to go? Yep. It's gonna be dangerous. Yep. All right. Let's go. Guys, if we let Kyron die, I'm never gonna forget We're gonna get this man killed. We we cannot let Kyron die. Chase, that reminded me of that moment from The Emperor's New Groove. (laughs) <laughs> when they're like stuck to the like the to the tree and they're about to go over the waterfall and he's like, Hey, don't freak out, but we're about to go over a huge waterfall and he's like he's like, uh, how far is it uh, how far is to the bomb? He's like, Yeah, fifty feet or so. He's like, Sharp rocks there? Definitely. Sharp he's rocks. like, Bring it on. Bring, Bring it on. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a rip and a half. What a, I, what a movie. I remember really liking that as a kid, and I know Yizma's got like some modern day cred. <laughs> What's his name? Kuska! <laughs> I should watch that again. I bet that's a delight. <laughs> so yeah, we grab Chiron and we head to make our way back. You and Amareya Dejani walk out as uh, Ed and Chiron say their farewells. Uh, after just a couple of minutes, Chiron joins you outside. That's pretty much it. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm sitting outside the, the hall, like, foot tapping, like, looking at my wrist. Like, where the fuck are they? Shit, 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 shit. Okay, Mordecai. <laughs> fuck. Um, I exit through the front of the temple to try to recollect Hugo. Yeah, Hugo runs right on up to you. And hey, but... they, uh, they just stood there and watched for a little while, and then they dispersed. Perfect. Um, I have another task for you. And What's I will up, boss? cast uh, Animal Messenger. Mm-hmm. Um, go find my mom and uh, tell her... It's like sending. I only have so many yeah. Timeline moved up. Nothing drastic. We're leaving for the autumnal line now. Bishops are hiding something about the forest lords. Wish I knew more. Good luck. Okay. And I dispatch Hugo to deliver that message, um, which will be said in my voice, which is even which is not as cool as Hugo's voice, but it will have to do. And then I will make my way to the docks, to the uh, sword quill, mm-hmm. to find Rakar. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll me a survival check. That I can do. 
Ooh, that's very good. And that'll be a 25. Nice. Oh, yeah. I rolled a 19. You find your way back to the sword quill pretty readily. And you see Panat is already there. Hi, Panat. Huh. Hey, sorry. Master Greenstone. Timeline moved up a little bit. I was coming to... I actually uh, just heard uh, Baylet had messaged me and asked me to see if we can move the timeline up. But very good. I will go ahead and allow you to to talk. Hey, uh, uh, weird, weird question for you, Panat. There's not like five of you, is there? Because you're like able to just like bit, bit, bit kind of wherever. I have my ways. And he winks. So there's five of you is what you're saying. Oh, come on. If you only knew. It's me. And he walks out the door. Ah. That's got to have like Similac rooms, right? <laughs> That'd be cool. Be handy. Um, I will uh, I will step into the sword quill. Mhm. You see Rakar is in there packing up um his sparse few possessions and looks up. Ah. Good. Good to see you again, Rakar. Would it be spending some time together? Indeed. Um, apologies for the uh, short notice on the leave. I work with Penats. It is a... It is rare that he utilizes this aspect of my ability. But I am aware of uh, the pressing nature of these. Well, um, yeah, we're going to be moving within the hour. Less than that at this point. Um, yes. Take the time you need to pack up and we'll be... I'll walk back with you to the temple. Ever since Bulwark, I travel light. I need to uh, let my father know, and uh, I will be there shortly. I'll I'll wait for you if that's alright. I can just wait out front. Certainly. Alright. And he, uh, you step out. It takes about, like, 15 minutes in order for him to kind of prep himself, but eventually he is Ready to go. You see he uh, comes out with a very small go bag, and uh, he has got the the sword quill kind of tucked into his, uh, into a leather strap. All right. Let's just go. All right. Um, and the two of you head back. While we're walking, I would just, I want to just ask him one thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, obviously you've got some sort of... Uh, talent, some some gift with magic. As I kind of just flex my tattoo arm. Yes. Does your and and we we were led to believe that the this guide we were going to receive had some sort of magical capabilities. Does that extend into a more of like sort of combative sense as well? Of course. Living the life I have led, I am uh, well versed in many utilizations of what I know how to do. And you've been through the autumnal line before? A few times. I do not like to repeat myself. We will discuss everything after we leave the city. Cool, cool. Uh, any family by chance that, um... I'm sorry. work. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a Do you have a daughter by chance? I don't, like, I, I, I met this person a while ago. I kind of had your eyes, like... I have family... All over the world. Yeah, it tracks. <laughs> as far as I know. My father... I was young when we left Bulwark. But my father was not. Ah, oh, so he's... He's her brother. My, head, my theory continues. I am not... How should I put this? When I left, I was quite young. I know that my family had some sort of position of power, and we were ousted. But that is it. And that is that is power long left to go. Let's get moving. Yeah. Hey, Griff, you look like you have something you want to say. Guys, the 13th. This is the... The 13th, 13th sorceress family. Sorcerer family from Graynor. Because we heard about the thirteenth in the dream in the in the Golden Inspiration, banished sorcerer family. It's fucking these guys. It's the Shadow Steps, or perhaps whatever their name was beforehand. Oh! Oh! All right, let's ride. You 
all gather near the head of the alley leading to the the secret tunnels beneath the temple. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. And your Kyrup Striders are still there. Balit is there waiting for you with Panat, who in turn shakes all of your hands. Thank you for everything, Panat. Do you want to come with us? <laughs> Look, Kyron's great, and Shadow's Step feels like he's going to be a real boon. But you are just very impressive. You get shit done. I, I am here to help. And he winks. We could. What does it mean, Panat? <laughs> Tell me your secrets. Um, Look, I, I, I don't want to be four decimators. We're all agreed on this, and Amare is a god. However, coming with us does make you an honorary yeah, um, decimator. Um, hey, hey, why don't why don't we why don't we get on? I I have. <laughs> can we can we go, please? Zephyr, do you need to use the bathroom? No, I just we need to go now. Okay, you all have a fantastic and safe trip and I look forward to hearing about it when you return. It's been a pleasure, Panat. And you as well, Mordecai Greenstone. Panat, you're great. Wink. We, well, let's go, boys. Settle up. <laughs> Come on, Amber. Mm -hmm. Amber. I don't think we like specifically hide our way out of the city, but we certainly don't make our presence known that we're leaving. Oh, of course. Your crew very quickly and efficiently leaves the city, Rakar at the head. You make your way towards the eastern side of the city, leave through an open gate. It is just afternoon. It has been a long morning. After you leave the city, Rakar pipes up. Gentlemen, we are going to be entering into the autumnal line. This is a for lack of a better term, a cursed wood. The forest has a mind of its own. The forest wants. And the forest will try and draw you in by any means necessary. The rules are simple. Stay to the path. Do not address what is off the path unless it addresses you first. Do not leave the path. It will tempt you, and it will try. Do not leave the path. It is dangerous, and if it catches scent of you, it will try and pull you in harder. And the further deep you go, the worse it gets. We have fuel. We have food. There should be no need for us to leave for any reason. I saw the question from Jackson. What if there's many paths? Do we take another one? Da, 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 da. Yes, but I will show you which other one to take. I appreciate that. It is my entire job. Also to defend in case something does happen. There is a being within the forest. It is something of a mix of a unholy, unseely fey thing. It wants. It is what controls the forest. I do not speak its name out of its presence, but you will know it when we see it, and we will see it. Any Rad. questions? How oh, long till no. we get there? Days? Weeks? We will be... It is a straight shot. You can see the forest just over there. And he points, and sure enough, while well, everything around you is... Uh, covered in patchy snow. Dead ahead, there is a beautiful golden amber forest. Okay, um, I have other topic of discussion um, if, uh, if there are no other questions. Don't leave the path. Don't talk to anything. You can talk to it if it talks to you first. Do not draw attention to yourself. I look around. Um, do I see any, like, you know, lone birds in the sky? You are as alone as you can be at being outside. Cool. Like, so there's not, like, you know, like a lone crow? Because if so, I blast out of the fucking sky. Uh, nah, you're good. Cool. Um, okay. So I got a... Um, a big sort of uh, thing dropped on me. Plan, learn all the secrets, actually learned you all the secrets? 
I kind of learned all the secrets. Um, so that's good work, uh, Zafir. Hi, Rakar. Welcome, welcome to the gang where we are constantly uh, testicles deep in the worst trouble. And here I gathered as much. And yes. here we are. We're- Dip um, peanut butter. Yeah. So this is a thing you're not. It's secrecy of the job. You understand. Safir, so, sure, I'm sure Panat gave you your NDA. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Safir, on a range of um, God destroying a mountain and King Lich, like where does I just can I want to prepare for this news? Where on the spectrum? we're definitely leaning more God destroys a mountain sort of levels here. Fuck. Still rough. Okay, right. so you know how the deep sort of told me that the 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 forest lords, their power was waning and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're gone. Like they, they just come again. They're just gone. They they uh, Almorea was free from the mountain, and they sort of wiped their hands, and they they just left. They're just gone. Just geo any gone. You mean like they they're like on sabbatical? No, they left. They're gone forever. I'm I'm sorry. It's Chiron. Yeah. Chiron types <laughs> I'm sorry, fucking what? Yeah, yeah, they've been, it's been, I mean, I, I don't want to say the whole thing again, because I've said it like three times. No, the forest I get lords it. are gone. I get it. Fuck. Yeah, apparently the lords left behind some sort of, like, magical spark for people to draw some power from. The divine spark. Yeah, that, sure. Is that that energy source, like, b- beneath the temple, maybe? That's, I would assume so, that, that that popped into being as the, the lords left. Um, however, um, without a proper, like, worthy champion to wield it, it cannot be used to sort of its full power. So that is why the bishops have been at sort of a not as powerful as they should be, and that is why Mantellum has been sort of gaining so much ground, is because those of the faith cannot sort of keep up. Hmm. Well. Wait. So, yes. So, wait. Amare, do you Fuck. need to make it all the way to your temple, or do you just need one of these divine sparks? Like, should we just turn around and go back? <laughs> Apparently, he he can't wield it. There are, there, there are a few things that may stop that. For one, I am not the lord of the forest. If I were to obtain the lo- the spark of the lords, that means they would all have to start worshipping me instead of them. That would cause some problems, I imagine, for them, which would be why they didn't offer it in the first place. The other thing is that it would be difficult. Ah. There is a, a rough alignment to these sparks. They take time to gets to where they need to go. That's a poor way of explaining that. How should I put this? It is it square peg, round hole, but I do have a saw. Oh, okay. I could make it work, but it would take time. That sounds like a really terrible sex move. Yeah, let's just go to the, these shitty woods instead. Because here, here is the thing. You're right. We could turn around. And if we... I don't know, talk to Mantellum or something like that. Maybe he could get us below that temple. But that would mean that would mean working with them. All right. I'm going to say it. Uh, Should we do that? No. Well, hold on. Let me game plan this out. Hold on. If we game plan this out, we need Amorea to be, like, super all-powerful and everything so that we can take care of Grainor for reals, right? Like, that's our end game here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amorea, if you get that Divine Spark, and then all of Lee's behind us, it takes some work, but then we have Lee and the Wilds, what's to stop us from taking you and getting your second Divine Spark? I'm fairly certain I would explode. In a good way, that means we win? No. Oh. If someone is in possession of it, well, for two reasons. One, if someone is in true possession of a divine spark, they cannot exist on this plane. That is what will send me back to the celestial realm. Oh. And even if somehow I could reach down and scoop up the second spark, I don't know if my being could actually sustain two sparks. It would be power unlike anyone has ever seen before. Now, 
if it works. What is worth a discussion, and maybe this is something you can do on your way back, if you can convince them to find someone or something that can wield it. Then we get two gods. Exactly. It's a lot. It is a tall order. It is not going to be... Can't... Look, as, as much as I love Gaudium, Gaudium cannot wield the Spark. <laughs> but he could be king. He, could, he, he is a man who could be king, yeah, will be currently king. could not be god. Mm-hmm. What a, These are things to think about. What about a patron? Patron could work. A demon? A fae? A fae who is not as strong? Well, you could somehow, if you could convince Gaia... What the patron has now is direct access. If she were to go to the celestial realm, she would lose that direct access. But maybe, maybe another fae, another fiend, maybe one of the outsiders. We need to think about this, boys. Yeah. Well, you've got time because we've got a road ahead of us yet. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and a merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, a special thanks to our donor, Nathan N., or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLoudly. Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht, Griffin at Griffcold, and Zach at that guy Zach Rob. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode, and until then, remember to pack light for unexpected trips. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.